everyone welcome back to the channel today i'm just going to give a little update on uh, my first week in the new job as an expert witness so for anyone who doesn't know what an expert witness does um, they are essentially hired by a lawyer to claim against or help claim against or help the defendant fight a claim and their claim could be you know from something like if a building fails or there's a structural failure a defect and basically anything which went wrong could be like program or cost. Um, as an expert witness, you'll be looking into how or why these went down and if they were reasonable to you know, help defend a claim, for example. Essentially, it's the expert's job to find out exactly what went down and then help the lawyers out with a report. So the first day in a job, as you know, UK um, that night, everyone got put in lockdown or the lockdown was announced. So the first day I was allowed to sort of go in and get my IT stuff and get some induction work done. Um, and that was pretty much it for the first day. I probably got introduced a little bit into what an expert does. I was given a couple of reports to read um, that day and also the day after. So just moving on to the second day, I had those two reports to read. One was called an advisory report and the other was a proper expert report. And I was given these two just to see what difference were like in the start not not necessarily the style of writing but you know an advisory report is done early on in in the process but an expert report is when it's deemed that the claim is sufficient to pursue or defend and that's when you write a really really big report but the advisory report is just sort of the expert witnesses initial opinion so I was just kind of reading them both um, yeah so I was been reading these two reports for day two and also had some introductions with some of the other team members in other offices. So what I'm finding out about these reports is that they're written in the first person, which can be very different to how a normal engineering report is probably written. And also what's really interesting about these, these reports is they are your own opinion. And these opinions will need to be justified by fact finding and through just like engineering research. And I think what's, uh, what's striking is even though you're hired by either the, the client or the defendant, say a contractor, to defend the claim, your your duty isn't actually to them. It is to the tribunal or the, um, the judge or the courts, essentially. Um, so e e yeah, even though you are hired by the client or the contractor, your, your duty isn't necessary to them, even though they're paying your bills. So it's really important that what you say in any report is your own opinion. And if, if you're, what I've been told, is if you're in a position where you don't think a claim is very strong, it is your duty to, to tell the lawyer that, that, that the claim is not very strong and that you probably should drop the claim because you wouldn't be able to defend your position in court or at a hearing if you were asked. Like if, if, the, if the evidence is weak and you were questioned on it and then you go to a hearing and it becomes apparent that that really isn't actually your opinion. Like if you, what you say in the report is embellished to say, and then at the hearing they, they find out actually that's not really your, your true opinion, then the case will just get thrown away and you'll lose. So it's really important as the expert witness to, to be independent and make sure that it is your own opinion based on your engineering evidence. So day three, I was introduced to a project which I'll be working on and it's a really, really big project which looks into um, essentially a, a lot of designs which have gone wrong. And obviously I'm not gonna say uh, company projects or give too much detail because it's, it is still confidential, but this is what I'll be looking at. So we were sent a load of information from an, en an engineer who had done a lot of sort of back end anal analysis. So it's our job to sift through the information and find out if what if they've done is, is right because they are part of our team so anything that they do is under our hat so we have to make sure that it's right and that they're checking the right things that we want to, we want them to check uh, and then for the rest of the week I'll, I'll, I've been doing this and also being introduced to more team team members so if it's not the team isn't just structure engineers we've got um, a couple of researchers and the researchers um, are really, really important. They proofread a lot of the reports because essentially engineers probably aren't gonna write the best reports and the engineers have to write reports which a layman will understand. And that's probably quite hard for most engineers to write. So the re researchers are there to 
read our reports, proofread them and make sure that they understand it because they are not of an engineering background. It's really important that if they don't understand it, then the report isn't written well enough because the reports go to the judge or whoever's um, you know, looking after the case. So if they don't understand it, then your, then your report is weak and your case is weak. So it's really important for the researchers to read it and make sure that they understand it. So on day five, I was actually looking at something called yield line theory, which you might have studied at university, but probably not really put into practice. I never put it into practice because it's an upper bound theorem. And it's, for me, it feels a little bit dodgy. <laughs> not that dodgy, but a bit scary too scary for me to use, um, mainly probably because I don't really understand how it's done because you really have to understand um, how slab deforms and, and yields and to look at crack patterns. So it's, it is probably quite hard and probably wouldn't be used for junior engineers because you, you don't have the experience to understand all the different failure patterns. Um, so I'm just looking at this and, and seeing if we've got grounds to use it on this particular project. So hopefully you've enjoyed this little update on uh, me being an expert witness. Um, I'll be doing another update probably in a month's time just to give me some time to learn the ropes a bit. Um, hopefully you'll you enjoy the updates and um, learn more about this side of engineering. I'm still really new to it so I'm, hopefully I'm not butchering the expert witness side too much if anyone is an expert witness watching this. Uh, but yeah I'm still learning a lot of the sort of legal terminology. Um, so yeah that's really really new for me. But anyway please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.